Jane Atkinson, you're in uh, nine episodes of House of Cards this season. A big bump up from the three you were in in season one. What was it like? <laughs> what was it like being more busy on the House of Cards set this year? Very rewarding, and it was wonderful to sort of have a um, a, a storyline of my own involved in the Underwood. Uh, machinations uh, for uh, seeking the presidency. Um, you know, everyone on the show is so wonderful. And as uh, Bo Elliman <laughs> said, um, it's, a, it's an embarrassment of riches for him having uh, the kind of um, stable of actors that he has. So I felt so great that it was my turn. Mm. And uh, like uh, when you join the show um, from season one, from uh, the, you know the very first couple of episodes of the show, did you know how big a role your character would end up playing as the series progressed? No, I I didn't because uh, you never know who is going to get thrown under the subway, <laughs> as <Yeah>. it were. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, you do. Um, um, I knew the show was going to do very well. I knew it was uh, a game changer. Um, I didn't necessarily know in terms of the kind of the Netflix streaming, you know, binge watching, how it would change the industry in that way necessarily. But I knew that it was going to do well because of Kevin and Robin and the team that they had gathered. Plus, it did very well in, in England when it had first aired. And it was so dynamic. Um, Kevin had just come off a uh, 10 month tour of Richard III. So when he first opened his mouth with that first direct address, we just got chills. It was wonderful. <laughs> had you watched much of the original British series back in the day? I've watched, a, I've watched um, quite a bit of it. It's, a, it's very different. It's a lot slower and it's, you know, it's the eighties. So it's a little dated in that respect. Um, but it, but it has that same fascination with director dress, um, and it's very Shakespearean. Mm. Uh, how do you reckon uh, your character of like Catherine Durant? How do you reckon she grew in this season of the show? Well, I think you, for me as an actor, what I what I discussed with Bo when he was writing this is that she's really been like in a, in a similar way that Stamper has, except she doesn't seem to have such a weird uh, background, is that she's been loyal. And one of the things that they have said that is the biggest commodity for them is loyalty. And this was, um, we focused on the fact that that was really she was a woman scorned you know they really played her and um and she's been loyal so the only way it, it was just a wonderful thing because he really didn't have anything on me he didn't have a way to get at me except to become the thing that we all know he is which is a sociopath and it and that was to me that's a wonderful and the arc of the show plus my character to have a witness to witness that because I had him I didn't care what he was going to do I knew his tricks I know what he does and he was going to do what I needed him to do or I was going to do what I needed to do and the only way he could take me down was to threaten to kill me <laughs> and I thought that was pretty pretty amazing television on this show so I was very proud of that Talk about that scene in the Oval with uh, Kevin slash Frank. Uh, what what was that scene like to shoot? What was it like when you read the script for the first time and you knew you'd be having this big confrontation? Well, first of all, I was thrilled. Um, and I didn't expect it. I didn't expect it. I thought I was going to, honestly, I, I thought somehow I was, I was going to be stay on the periphery more. So I was really excited and it was very important to me and Bo was very supportive of, of having Catherine be very strong with him. And when we started, when we started sort of playing that out and how was I go, how was he going to play that threat? He was just a master with 
presenting the threat. So when you work with someone of that caliber, you just it just brings out the best in you. So it was very exciting. It was very exciting for me as an actor to have that, that uh, moment with um, I got to do my thing and he, and he provided that uh, playground to Kevin did. Mm. did. Did it take a long time to shoot that scene? Like, was that like something you really had to, you know, workshop and go through? Well, we rehearsed it and we rehearsed the power dynamics. There were a few lines that got added in to up the ante. And one of those was about loyalty, that I have been loyal. This isn't about, this isn't a game here. I've given you, I've given you, now it's my turn. And you either give me what I, I want. And he makes a, you know, this is my wife we're talking about. And uh, the thing is, I would have given him that if he'd been honest with me. Do not mess with a woman. Do not. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sort of his, one of his work wife. You know, I'm there. I'm, I'm doing it. Um, so we, we did that. And then when we rehearsed it, uh, we did a few takes and Kevin just nailed it. You know, he just nailed it. And it wasn't hard to feel, <laughs> to feel scared. Uh, it wasn't hard, you know. So yeah. that's how that went. Yeah, that's like, uh, yeah, it seemed like it, in those Catherine was more upset, not about losing the vice presidency, but this ally that she thought she had had uh, hid the game from her. Yeah, not very, you know, again, she says, you didn't tell me the truth. You could have. I would have been a team player. And it was interesting because, you know, Claire had said, we got to let her in on this. You know, but this is where the house of cards elements are happening and uh you know i don't know what they're going to do next season but i think with this scene and maybe i'm wrong but i think with this scene you're starting to see things pull apart at the seams a little bit because that was the only tactic he had and he didn't have to play it that way didn't have to so um i don't know what's gonna happen yeah, like it's almost seemed like it's been a tougher, um, like sort of getting to power was easier for Frank to sort of be building this house of cards and now he's struggling, now he's in that position to keep it. But. Exactly. Much like Richard III. I mean, if you think about how he had what he did and the machinations and then he gets there and there is the paranoia, there is uh, the fear and... Um, who can you trust and he doesn't trust in the wrong places he could have trusted me and he chose not to so what, yeah what do you think Catherine's state of mind was this season in terms of like had she like did she get an understanding for the underwoods and what they were capable for this season that she hadn't had before was she given some insight <laughs> Did, ask that, I'm sorry, the phone rang. Sorry, what, no, what was the question? Um, do you reckon this season, um, Catherine got an insight into the Underwoods that she didn't have before? Did she, like, learn something, like, really understand who she was dealing with, you know, much more real level? Yes, because uh, I do think, I think so. You know, I think she, she garnered... Claire garnered a healthy respect from her uh, when she was able to negotiate with, with uh, Putin. Mm -hmm. um, and it was reluctant, but... And um, so a, a woman to woman, I think that relationship grew. Um, we never really saw them reconcile when he asked her to run for vice president but the idea is that they did that it was uh for political purposes and she was brought into the fold um i think what uh, we saw her put together when things started to go a little sideways was that perhaps he was using some of the same machinations that she had joined with him in against zoe and so that's where i think you see that she has an insight that she's been part of those machinations. So she's not innocent, but I think 
the depth to which the two of them would throw her under the bus was uh, shocking for her. Mm. I don't and think she, she felt they would do it to her because she's been a respectful player um, and she's also been uh, quiet about the issues. That I think will be could possibly be her demise. I think at the end of the season, you see that she's really worried about the questions that that are starting to be asked. And he says, "Trust me." And really, really, <laughs> why would <you? laughs> you know? Uh, so that look on my face is, "Oh my God, I'm screwed." <laughs> yeah, because you got such you got such an interesting character because you were involved in sort of Frank's first big move in the House of Cards where, you know, it was the, the whole Secretary of State situation. That's sort of what triggered the whole sort of like um, series, like spurred the yes. whole series and everything else. Like, so, so that, that she, even though she may not realise the extent to which she like got an insight into his sort of like way he politically works very early on than a lot of other like, it, and you were sort of aware more of what was going on than a Peter Russo that was really like a, a no idea. It was really it. more. Yeah, no. She's she's politically she is politically savvy. Uh, that is how she was set up. Her character was set up to be politically savvy. So she's she's def, she's not an innocent, is what I'm saying. But uh, but what I do think she was shown this season is that she was a worthy opponent when that political savvy was turned on her more so than mo most of the characters that he's taken down. And uh, I like that. I, I think that is, is right because he's only as good as the people who are good that are around him. You know, if, it's, if he can take people down too easily, you start going, oh, you know, but if, but I, I, I think with what the writing and with what we did that it, that it showed that I was a worthy, uh, opponent because he he couldn't really pull out a card to take me down except to kind of show what a monster he is. Mm. And it's so, <laughs> so far, you're also one of the only characters that are like a real skeleton in their closet, like no, you know, alcoholism or prostitutes or <laughs> like any anything that he can like sort of take you down with. Right, and I think that's very interesting. So I think right now the skeleton is that he that he has uh, that he can twist around, and he hasn't been able to do it, and it wasn't in his interest. Is the fact that I did sort of mash up that whole Chinese situation, um, which probably, you know, I think it it has precedence. Don't you love? I sound like a Secretary of State. <laughs> Mostly because when we do these things, we ask, and this is our job, really important questions like, is is this legal? Wouldn't this woman, wouldn't this character in her position let him know that it, what we're doing, what's at stake, the legality of things? And she sort of bends the rules, and that might be her undoing. Hmm. And um, like, what what is it like as an actress getting to work opposite uh, Kevin Spacey and Robin Wright on the show? Like, does that like does that? Yeah, what is that like? Um, working with Kevin is, you know, for me is being in uh, a master class in in, um, in in acting for the camera. He's comfortable. He's eat, you know he can eat and act. He can. Uh, he, he works all day long, so he has cue cards, so he can, he just makes everything look easy. And so that definitely brings up my game. And Robin, the same way. Robin also directed quite a few of the episodes that I was in, and I have to say that working with her as a director was just, I, you know, whipped cream on the already delicious Sunday because he, an actor's director. And so she would encourage me, okay, that was good. We got that. Try something completely different. And, and uh, also as a woman uh, in front of a camera, she's very protective of the angles and the way I look. And I really appreciate that as well because it's a double, it's a double thing, right? We've, we've got to make sure we don't have something between our teeth as well as uh, deliver a scene. So um, 
uh, all the episodes that I worked with her, all the directors were good, but I, I also love watching her come into her own as a director. In fact, we were working on a scene one day where she wasn't directing and she said something to me and I said, you can't take the hat off. She said, no, everything I see now is through the lens of a director. Um, which So it's, it's wonderful to watch her coming into that power as well. Um, it's a whole different creative uh, engine and she's very good at it. Mm. Do you have another fun uh, onset experience from the show? An onset experience? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, there's all oh, goodness things happen all the time. So you know, in the we call it the three the 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 the, the Meacham the threesome. The yeah. Meacham. Yeah. Well, while we were shooting, uh, while we were this would never be on camera, but while we were shooting the scene where he's telling me to go out there and whip him and everything. Uh, all of a sudden I heard a burst of laughter and they had planned that uh, Robin and Nev and uh, Stamper would uh, get up and get into a threesome in the back of that room and they shot it. It was very, very funny. And of course I'm on the outside going, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? But, uh, that was very, very funny. Very funny moment. Oh, that's good. But uh, Kevin... And Kevin is such a crack up. He's always making jokes. He has so many lines and he'll just break out into one of his impressions, you know, when a line doesn't come out and he, 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 he you know, that sort of thing. But uh, he brings a lot of laughter to, to work. Uh, and what, what's it like uh, as an actor uh, when Kevin uh, like will like turn to one of the other cameras and do one of his sort of like asides <laughs> and you have to sort of stand in the background as so he like turns That's and goes, you know. This is where, this is where you, uh, honey? Can yeah, you come and answer the question? You're gonna, he, he has more experience with that than I do. Yes, he does. Here. Hello. So we, we've got a we've got another uh, house of cards. We've got a house of cards president uh, <laughs> joining us, Michael. Uh, I was just asking. Uh, I was just asking Jane what it's like uh, when. Uh, you're an actor and you've got to be in the background while Kevin sort of turns to the camera and sort of goes like, you know, oh, the thing about a cat and a. Uh, whale is that they've got to do whatever and like what what, do you do? what, what, do you what do? is that like for you in the background usually i'm just like dude i'm standing right here <laughs> yeah <laughs> i can hear you because a lot of those asides were really about oh. me for instance when i'm on the couch sleeping and he looks up and he goes i hate sleep sleep is for weak people all that stuff i'm like dude you're waking me up i can hear you <laughs> right here right now what's the deal so as an actor it's a lot of fun to just sort of continue your through line of where you are and you sort of have this um conventional freeze where you're just you sort of slow down your process giving him the space to turn around to the camera and do that and then it sort of finds you there again and very often you would run through the scene do it and then take back for the for his to be taken separately so that you had a flow of the scene and then that was an insert. So it didn't interrupt the scene, but they were able to edit it in such a way that it, it was right there. Um, so, but, but most of the time I would just joke around at some point at some take and go, uh, this is, does not sound good for me. Now we're going to do something for you. We're going to have yeah. the Secretary of State and the President of the United States have a kiss. Ah, oh, that'd be lovely. Could, could you do that again and say something right before you do so the camera's on you when that happens? <laughs> All right. What do you, what, what? Well, what should we say? <laughs> and say now whatever you like. We're not in the Oval Office. We're home. I, I've chatted with a lot of people from TV shows, guys. I've never, uh, we've never had a kiss. We've never had a, <laughs> we've never had a kiss in one the of the chats. Cam. So. It's the kiss yeah, the cam. kiss cam. Oh, uh, very good. Say, what was it like to work with your husband? Because when we first got there, yeah. people actually did not know we were married. Robin had no idea that we were yeah. married. In fact, he had a picture of me that they uh, of us behind his desk in the Oval Office, and he had to go to the art department and say, uh, "That's the Secretary of State." And I don't think I'm married to her. It was very fun. Very, very fun. 
Oh, that's so cool. And how did, how did you both get the roles on the show? Was it coincidence? Was there like... Um, well, uh, there was a very long process. David Fincher actually took quite a while to cast the show. Michael actually went in at first for um, the Secretary of State, the original Secretary of State. Oh, you went in the, he went in for the president first. Then he went in for the secretary of state and they were sort of going back and forth with that. And then, and then three months later, I was asked to come in and audition for the secretary of state. The, the, the casting for house of cards went on for a long time and, uh, and they did not know that we were married. So he got a call back and then I got a call back. And then he got another call back. Then I got the part. Then he got called back again for the president. So I got the part first, even though he auditioned first. And I think by his last call back, they knew that we were married. But up until then, they, they nobody knew. And the cast didn't know till we arrived. <laughs> it's very oh, it's it's, it's amazing. Um, and you know, it was really cool. Um, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you both got uh, part of the Screen Actors Guild Ensemble nomination for House of Cards. Yes, we did. We so did. That would... Very proud. Mm. We're both in the theater. Um, and to be part of a show that is so well written, so well acted, and such a game changer in the industry just is such a wonderful reward for what we do, you know, this is what we do. And it's not, you know, it's a, it's a job. Most people think is very glamorous, but basically I, we show up, we got to put makeup and hair on and we got to know our lines and we have to step here and step here and do it over and over and over again. It's not very glamorous, um, but it was uh, very rewarding, very exciting. We're very proud of it. And it was your uh, second Screen Actors Guild nomination because you got in for the 24. Uh, yes. when you're on that cast. Well, we won. We yeah, won. You, yes, yes. I, that was... I, I bring luck to a show, I think, because we that season we, we won, and that was that was an amazing thing. I was um, uh, originally going in to play the president's wife, and I didn't get the part, and then the actress who was in the role uh, didn't work out, and they called me up, and I, had, I hadn't only watched one episode of the show, and then I watched it, and of course became a huge fan. And uh, then I got the part, and I was, I was like, "Oh my God, I'm going to be working with Jack, <laughs> Jack." Yeah, and, and season five was the best season of really 24, good. in my opinion. Like season one was really good too, but season five didn't really have a weak spot. No, everyone was wonderful, and um, you know, I had watched the show, and I came in, and I watched the episode where they kill Edward. Was it? It was yeah. Chloe and and yeah, and they Wait, killed. So that the, the gas, the gas, the gas in the yeah, the gas yeah. Him. I yeah. screamed, and they all knew that he was dead. And I said, "You can't, you can't kill him. You the people are going to be so upset if you kill him." But they killed him. There's all the girls. I'm like, uh, Jane. Uh, it's not the first time uh, we've killed someone on twenty four. Yeah, everybody <laughs> loves. But so yeah. no one was safe. Nobody was safe. Yeah, but oh, that's good. Yeah, that was, that was good. Like Gregory Itzen was so good that year too. Oh. He was ah, oh, he was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but, very uh, lucky. Very lucky yeah. to be on some really wonderful, wonderful shows. Yeah. And any any similarities between Twenty Four and like House of Cards? Like as an actress, have you found that you're similar, or it's like Catherine Drake, it's such a different role to Karen Hayes? Well, I think the similarity is that they're women in roles of power. They're ambitious women. Um, and they both face, although I think Catherine Durant faces a different uh, set of circumstances, I think that the similarity is that the people they believe in turn out to be um, not who they think they are. And I, so I think there is a similarity in, in those ways. Um, you, don't, you don't really get much of Catherine Durant's personal life. I don't see her as, uh, in some ways, uh, warm um, and uh, emotionally connected the way that I was able to be with um, Karen. Um, 
and that was because of Bill. You know, I got to have a relationship, even though you never saw it. It was always off camera um, when we were on the phone. Um, but uh, so I do think that um, with Karen, I was able to show I, that I was more in charge of things than I think I've been able to show for House of Cards. Um, so in that in that respect, I think that I, as an actor, I had more uh, given to me more this, but there's a, there's similarities in the kind of women that they are, and I think that's why I got the part. Honestly, there there is uh, you know on television you really do um, if you can show that you can show up and bring that that's your coin for uh, for work. Yeah, did um, we talked about your big scene in the Oval Office with Frank? Were there any other scenes or moments from the most recent season of House of Cards that you are particularly fond of? Um, I know it's so, sort of a silly moment, but when we're actually in cahoots and he's uh, and we're and we're in a really good place about what I'm going to go do, and I say, you know, um, you whip him, you 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 sweet talk him, I'll whip him. It's uh, leather and and uh, sugar and leather, or leather and lace, or something like that. I love oh well, I I love that scene because I'm smiling and I'm lighter and I'm happy and I'm hopeful, and I think it shows a wonderful contrast to all the moments where I'm sort of not where I'm delivering information. Um, so I love, I loved doing that scene because I'm energized and I'm happy and I'm excited and I'm in the inner circle and I love that. But of course my favorite scene of my entire uh, four years uh, there is uh, the, the beer pong scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, to me, that was so much fun. I got to be a little drunk. I got to be a little silly. You got to hear, you know, a little sass. And, um, you know, when you play such a stay, you stayed person, uh, it's wonderful to have that outlet. So that was, that, of all the scenes I've ever done, uh, besides the that one, I love the beer pong. I love that. Yeah, oh, that's good. Um, I I might be. Oh, the plan is to be talking with Michael Kelly sometime in the okay. next month. Yeah, I I, I um yeah. I, we chatted last year. He's a great guy to talk to. Do you have any uh, good questions that I could ask Michael Kelly? Well, I've read some interviews that he's done. Of course, he's fr uh, we're friends, and I think I'd love to know what his character thinks of Catherine Durant. <laughs> Yeah, what do you think he thinks about her. Um, we've had we've had some uh, conflicting moments, and then we were sort of aligned when I said we got to get rid of this guy. I mean, we you know when um, Ed uh, when uh, Reed Bernie was vice president, and all of a sudden he was president. It's like we got he does not know what he is doing, and that was kind of fun to play with him. Um, and the other thing is is what is what happened to him. <laughs> What does he think his history, his backstory is that he is such a, just such a weird, weird man. And he'll say, I don't think he's weird, but he is. He's, he's a strange man. He's a, what makes, what is it? What happened? So I'll, I'll ask him why is Doug Stamp is such a weird, strange man? A weird, what? Yeah. So, so I'll say, Jane said to ask you, what happened to you, Stamper? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. Like, do, are you ever jealous that you don't have a like weird, strange side on the show? Oh, sure, because. That is always challenge. I'm glad they haven't made me a drug addict or an alcoholic. That happened to me on Criminal Minds. They mm -hmm. all of a sudden I was an alcoholic, <laughs> and, I, and I never knew that. You know, people said, "When did you know that you were an alcoholic?" I said, "When I'm throwing my hands, my face into my hands, because I I had no idea till they told me that episode." Um, yeah, I I think uh, there isn't. There, the, I think Kathy has stayed on because, you know, she, because she's the Secretary of State, she's been there to be, to create conflict. Um, 
And I, so uh, yeah, sometimes I wish I had a, a more of a backstory, but when you have more of a backstory, you could actually get killed. So I'm actually been happy that I'm, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I just work, you know, and it's yeah. really wonderful to, to be, uh, to be nominated from the show. Um, for your, uh, amongst all, there's so much going, you know, so much content and, um, but it's wonderful to be recognized from my show that uh, I did good work this season. And, and what, what, like, if you got nominated for Best Supporting Actress at the Emmys this year, what episode would you submit? What chapter would you put forward to the uh, Emmy judges? The, the, the one, the confrontation scene. Yeah, yeah chapter yeah. 10. That's the scene, that's the, the scene that I'm, I think that's the one that they gave them to look at. Um, but I think we'll be there anyway. I think the show will get nominated yes, anyway. But, um, definitely. You know, it's just nice to be on the radar. Yeah, no, very much. And you very much were this season on the show. Um, thank you so much, Jane, for chatting oh, with us yeah. today. All the be Congrats on surviving four seasons <laughs> of House of Cards. <laughs> yeah, you're still going strong. I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats, um, yeah, congrats to, congrats to uh, Michael as well for surviving. Yeah, he showed up this season. Of course, yeah. keep it a secret and who knows what will happen uh, next mm. season. But uh, that was that was good for him. He had fun doing that. Yeah, no, it was good. And, um, and uh, yeah, so uh, th thanks to Chang for uh, chatting to us. All the best with the Emmys, all the best with the House of Cards and, and all that. And a, a big thanks to Michael too for popping in. Hi. Nice to meet you. Come say goodbye. I look forward to coming down under. Yes, guys, you got to get down to Sydney. We will. We will. Thanks <laughs> Thank so you. much. Take no care. Worries. Thank you. Bye. Bye.